Hello humans and fellow aliens, I'm Cepadia and today we're going to be talking about linear drumming. I'm going to go over what linear drumming is and give you some examples and then we'll talk about how you can use linear drumming in the context of music production and not just for drum programming, but how you can use the, the concept of linear drumming to create you know, new melodies that you wouldn't have thought of before. Linear drumming is a really fun concept to mess around with in drum programming too. We're gonna to talk about how to create fills with linear drumming. Not a super heady topic today. Um, so uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll get right into it. Shabang. Shabang. All right, what is linear drumming? So uh, if you are not a drummer, you probably haven't heard this term, but you've definitely heard linear drumming. It, it, you know, just like listening to it, listening to music. Not, you, you've heard linear drumming while listening to music. And you're also, you would also be listening to linear drumming at the same time if you had heard it. Linear drumming is essentially when, uh, here, let me, let me just show you an example. I, okay, so I have, I have this linear thing that I've already cooked up, but let me, let me explain this a little bit differently. So this is, this is standard rock beat. So you got the cymbals going on all of the uh, eighth notes and then the kick and the kick on the one and three, the snare on the two and four. The drums are being layered. I'm hitting the crash with the kick on the first beat. Uh, every time I hit the snare, it's it's being hit with a hi-hat and every subsequent time I hit the kick, it's being hit with a hi-hat as well. This is a standard form of drumming. Linear drumming is essentially where no two drums are playing at the same time or are hit at the same time. So it's linear and the reason it's called linear is because on in notation it would look, you could draw a line from each note to the next and none of the lines would be going vertically. At least I assume that's why it's called. <laughs> but uh, you know, you never know. But this would be like a linear drum pattern based off of that classic drum pattern. Groovy as shit. Linear drumming is, this, yeah, it's, that's, that's what linear drumming is. It's when uh, the drums are not being layered on top of each other and each drum is being played individually. Why is linear drumming, why am I talking about linear drumming? You know, um, the reason I wanted to talk about linear drumming is because uh, learning about linear drumming as a drummer was incredibly influential in the way that I, I wrote drum parts and, the, and that I, in the way that I practiced drums. And it's in a lot of like prog metal um, Matt Garska of Animals as Leaders uses linear drumming a lot. Uh, so does Matt Halpern of Periphery, which is my favorite band. And I would show you examples, but the last two videos where I've showed actual examples of things in music that I don't own, they've gotten copyright strikes, which isn't that big of a deal because like three of you guys watch this uh, and I appreciate you guys, but uh, I can't, I'm not going to be able to do that from now on just because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get more copyright strikes. I don't know what the the deal is with that. Uh, YouTube really needs to get on their shit because it's like I just played like 30 seconds of, of music to show you what I'm talking about. So anyway, we'll stick to just giving you examples. I'll, I'll stick to just giving you examples so that we collectively don't get copyright striked. Stroke. Struck. Copyright struck? Is that a legal term? This is a linear... Uh, linear pattern that I wrote out uh, to kind of show how fun you can make linear drumming and how you can use linear drumming to make sort of like both metaphorically and literally a melody with the drums. Um, and I'll show you literally in a second, but uh, metaphorically it, you're dancing around the drums and you're using all of the different drums uh, for their tonal qualities to create groove and rhythm in a, in a new and interesting way. I'm going to slow that down so you can hear all of the drums being played individually. I'm going to slow it down to like 75 BPM. So imagine this is like 150 dubstep. These are eighth notes instead of 16th notes.
that's that's a linear drum pattern um and and you can use any sort of uh any sort of drums obviously um just as long as they're not layered on top of each other i'm not going to delete this i don't want to do that you can like mess around with this like when you get uh when you start practicing this um this is something that i just did now i haven't ever tried it before but it turned out really nicely here's what we're going to do we're going to make a, a melody literally out of the drum pattern and all i have to do is copy it down and change some things change a few things around to make it work the best way to kind of do this instead of finding all the notes that are not in the scale that i want to use i just put on the minor harmonic scale uh midi effect So then we can add like a regular drum pattern over that. We could also just put the linear pattern under it. You know, that's not the best melody in the world, but it is a start, a good starting point. Um, and it's, a melody that I probably wouldn't have thought to make in the first place. Let's talk about, so we got these, let's talk about these little sections right here, these fills, because that's mostly uh, what I wanted or why I wanted to talk about linear, linear drumming is because of linear fills. So linear drumming is really cool in and of itself, but if you're producing electronic music like me, it's not really a useful tool uh, for drum programming because you're making dance music and, and it can't be like this, it can't be this crazy. Maybe in certain sections you could like utilize this tool, but for the most part, uh, everyone's gonna think you're insane uh, if you released a song with like this. Like if I, hold on. Um... Maybe if you were making like a IDM dubstep genre blend, that would actually work. But if you're just trying to make like normal dubstep or like a normal dance track. It doesn't really work, but I could take just this last part. I could also just do Essentially, what I'm getting at is the best way to utilize linear in in this part. And the best way to utilize linear drumming is in your fills. First of all, it's easier to mix. Uh, none of the drums are going to be clashing with each other. But second of all, it just sounds really cool. You know, get like get creative with it. But you know, thinking about like how a drummer would play it, this is the snare, kick. You got your rack toms and your floor tom. And these are your hi hats and your your hi hat, open hi hat. This is like a different snare. Uh, but thinking like a drummer, uh, this would go right hand snare, left hand rack tom, and then foot on the kick. And then you could right hand on the floor tom, back to left hand on the rack tom, second rack tom, snare again. That's a good spot for the snare and then another kick. And then what do you have? And I could also just include like this little section too. What is this? It's hi-hat, rack, rack. So probably uh, you do what it's, you're on the kick. Yeah, it'd be like an overhand hi-hat, rack tom, rack tom, hi-hat, floor tom, kick, and then that's doable, but to make it a little bit easier, we'll do the hi-hat again so we can hit the... We did that same type of thing over here. 
I like that uh, triplet, but let's see what else we can do. Eh. That's like a cool fill right there. Um, so we'll just send this on over. All right, so you have these like really interesting fills that kind of go all over the place and it's a nice, it's like nice ear candy and a listener doesn't really have to understand what's going on to enjoy it. Whereas like for this one, It's, it's good, like the same thing, like a listener doesn't have to understand what's going on to enjoy it, but under this, or even without this, but like with this on top of it, it doesn't really work. But when you stop everything, you have like maybe uh, some like glitch sound or like a Nero bass. Actually, let's, uh, let's try it with like a fill sound. Just copy this down here and copy this over here. All right, so you got. We could also do it uh, at the, like the glitch hop level. Let's see what that sounds like, you know. While we're here, so how sick was that? There's not really much more uh, to this lesson. Uh, just this is a great way to create uh, cool fills, cool drum patterns, and unpredictable melodies if you so choose to use it like that. Uh, yeah, linear fills uh, or linear drumming in general. Um, new tool for you guys. Uh, enjoy it. Uh, I will put this on for the end and that'll be it. All right, not a super long one today, but I hope it was at least a little bit informative. Linear fills is something that I mess around with all the time in my own production. And I hope I was able to explain it in a way that it can become a tool in your arsenal because linear fills are so, 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 so cool. They are my favorite things in the world. Uh, linear drumming in general is one of my favorite things in the world because it just sounds so cool. So yeah, go forth my children and, uh, and, and linear those drums. You know, like subscribe, share, um, and uh, I will see you next week when we talk about tuplets. Mm -hmm.